I don't know if this is a hot take or not. I don't know if I'm going to get crucified on Doctor Who Twitter for saying this, but you know what? Queer people are all right. There was a issue of Doctor Who magazine that just dropped, issue 591, and it was their Pride issue. Not only was there just some really cool news uh, that we've covered on stream as well, the casting of Indira Varma, Target novels, the episode titles, etc, etc. There was just a load of really, really cool stuff in terms of LGBTQ plus representation, including a short segment uh, written by Russ T. Davis on the casting of Yasmin Finney, who is going to be playing a character called Rose in the 60th anniversary special. And there was just a bit more, you know, Yasmin Khan, Bill Potts, the, the one gay character from 1973, but they couldn't explicitly say that he was so, because that's just what the times were back then, etc, etc. So what I, what I think is really, really cool about this is firstly it's just putting that stuff front and center especially when i think you know the chibnall era did of course have like thasmin but there was a bit of a i think a reluctance to push it front and center lgbtq plus representation just generally in the media but when it comes to like uh the upcoming russ t davis 2 era i think because they're not making doctor who from bbc studios they're now just generally giving way less of a shit and just how awesome is it as well just to have yasmin finney a trans actress be on the cover of doctor who magazine out in the wild as well i saw these as well uh yasmin finney on the cover of i don't know what that magazine is because yasmin finney's afro her hair is covering up the is it ellie is it L? I don't know. Either way, I saw these out in the wild the other day. So, you know, Yasmin Finney is taking over the world. Her casting is going to change the world. I think that's really, really cool. What I think we need to talk about, though, and I, well, I, this acceptance of LGBTQ, LGBTQ plus uh, representation in Doctor Who is something that has been encroaching for, you know, nearly 20 years now. Captain Jack Harkness, of course, in 2005 and other characters uh, since then. Clara Oswald, Bill Potts as well, etc. I do think that the fandom generally, the Doctor Who fandom, needs to come to a little bit of a... Uh, I, I don't want to say a reckoning. I just think it needs to have a little bit of a... It needs to brace for impact, more or less, because while we're kind of in a bit of a quiet period in terms of Doctor Who news and publicity and promotion and stuff, generally speaking, relatively speaking, when we get closer to the 60th anniversary broadcast, when we get maybe a couple of weeks or a month or two away, promotion is going to ramp up. There's going to be more discussion generally about it. And I don't think the fandom is quite ready to defend themselves or defend the show or defend the community generally more broadly, if slash when that happens. Because I remember back in 2017, 2018, when Jodie Whittaker was announced as the 13th Doctor, and I don't think the fandom generally was ready just for the amount of vitriol that would be thrown upon the fandom, the show, generally speaking, and its creatives, just from having a woman be the lead character in a TV show for a couple of years. Because for all intents and purposes, that is what happened when Jodie Whittaker took over Doctor Who. It wasn't a permanent change. It was never going to be a permanent change due to the whole, you know, the, the actual nature of Doctor Who itself. She was going to regenerate eventually, maybe into another woman, but eventually it would be another man taking over the role of Doctor Who. It was always by the formula of Doctor Who, going to be a temporary change. But that was significantly too much for conservative media, for conservatism in general, who lost their shit. I saw a screenshot, It was I think it was in my Discord server, somebody put um, Bolstrex tweet out the other day. I'm blocked, so I, I can't really show it up on screen. Because uh, they the, the Doctor Who Twitter account shared that photo of all the cosplayers of Jodie Whittaker in front of the TARDIS from 2018. Uh, and he was saying this is when all the degeneracy began. So j just the idea of a woman being it being the doctor for a couple of years temporarily is considered to just be outright degeneracy and of course all of the rumors and everything that circulated around chris chibnall and jodie whittaker i saw right during the chibnall era people uh wondering whether or not chris chibnall was secretly jewish and that's why he was ruining the show this was from like a, a multi like hundred thousand subscriber youtube channel who was making these accusations from people saying that uh, jodie whittaker's marriage was a sham which is why she was trying to push uh thasmin into the show uh speculation upon speculation of, of jody whittaker's personal life or like i'm not saying that this sort of backlash and these tabloid 
tropes never happened for previous eras. They obviously did. But I think what was, you know, hostility within a fandom, for example, towards like creatives like Russell T. Davis and Stephen Moffat and stuff. When Chris Chibnall took over and Jodie Whittaker was the doctor, that was like, it jumped up a notch and it went more public and it went more mainstream. Aiden in the chat, I would argue the kind of backlash started when Pearl Mackey was cast, but it became mainstream with Jodie. I think that was sort of the rumblings of it when Pearl Mackey was cast. Like, even looking back to people who are doing, like, retrospective lookbacks now of, like, when did Doctor Who get woke? The seeds were there in Series 10, and all of they can cite was just, it was a, a queer black companion. That's literally all they had. That was, I, identity politics was just first and foremost in their minds. And what you've got now... And I think it's worth mentioning now because it is Pride Month. You've got this massive, huge escalation of anti-LGBTQ plus rhetoric, both in the UK, but especially in America right now. And of course, with the Disney Plus deal, you're going to be getting more international attention and a lot of international eyeballs on Doctor Who. And I just want to make sure that fandom is kind of ready for that, like bracing themselves for impact. Like, of course, if you are queer, if you are in this community, you already know that things are pretty bad broadly. I'm not here to try and explain something that you clearly already know. But I also just want to draw your attention to the fact that this is happening and you can actually speak against this. When... Basically, back in January, a lot of people got very, very angry at me for things that they think that I said about Disney and representation and stuff like that. And you know what? Fair enough if you don't like me. That's completely fair enough. But when I go onto these accounts, I see them talking shit about me, about other WhoTubers who are ostensibly allies. Imperfect. I understand that. But ostensibly allies on the same, quote, side. But you go on these accounts, you never, ever, ever see them talking about, for example, GB News platforming a University of Liverpool lecturer saying that uh, LGBTQ plus people and black people as well being in media is a box tick no matter how talented they are. Let's play a clip. It is my bag, but alas, I don't watch Doctor Who You've got to be either. super quick. Get your bag out um, I, I, I do think it's a box ticking exercise. The, the difficulty with it is, is even if these actors are brilliant, which I'm sure they am, they'll always be seen as a box ticking... Uh, they are. They'll always be seen as a box ticking exercise. Um, and it's also social engineering with children, and that's the thing that I'm, I'm really concerned about. Social engineering by having a black doctor, a black supporting character in Yasmin Finney as Rose, and a trans actress as Rose as well. Also, you got Talk TV saying that an LGBTQ plus representation in Doctor Who is predatory to children, leaning into that groomer narrative. Same sex. What really grates to me, Kevin, is the fact that it's again taking a basically innocent program and having to hammer home, home a point. And, and whether it's about same sex or anything else, the BBC, the writers and, you know, the right thinking people or so-called will be celebrating the fact that this is breaking down another barrier. I would say it's quite sad. This, sh this show was about kids hiding behind the settee uh, from Daleks and Cybermen, cyber people. Um, but now it's, it's they're going to be hiding behind the settee because the, the, you know, the doctor's chasing them in a predatory way. I, I just think that, you know... We've gone over this clip before, this Nigel Pauly and Kevin O'Sullivan clip. This clip actually broke off com regulations because Kevin O'Sullivan did not provide a counter-narrative, did not dispute the hate speech that was said. In certain contexts, hate speech is allowable. Like, for example, if you watched It's a Sin, they can say slurs because they are, you know, it was representative of the time they're being attacked. It's all for the cause of drama, for example. But in a news outlet, for example, if somebody says that LGBTQ plus representation in media is predatory to children, pushing the groomer narrative or whatever, Kevin is kind of obligated as a broadcaster, um, as a journalist, as a broadcaster to rebuke and respond to that and he didn't thus breaking Ofcom regulations nothing happened of course because Ofcom was run by Tories but you know what I mean so while people within the fandom of the community of Doctor Who are getting flack left right and center I don't see anyone talking about this these are like broadcast tv Murdoch funded apparatuses that are trying to push this same narrative occasionally of course you will get for example 
um, you will get like YouTubers who try and push this narrative as well on a much smaller scale. Here's a very lovely thumbnail from a uh, rabbi from another planet as well. Uh, photoshopping David Tennant shirtless wearing uh, a, a bow tie. Uh, it's Pride Month and every Doctor Who character is now gay. Uh, and uh, making David Tennant in these speech bubbles say it's Pride Month and we want to send the clear message the only audience we're interested in is a rainbow one that just loves introducing and involving children with intense adult sexuality. Let's of course not forget that this thumbnail is being made by the exact same person who said this about Victoria, the companion Victoria, who, Lee, I remind you, is a 15-year-old girl. Uh... Oh, Polly, better Polly. Yeah, okay, so I reckon I had a chance with Polly. Uh, uh, for context, this is him listing off companions he thinks he could sleep with. Uh, moving into Troughton. Uh, Victoria, easy. Too innocent. Victoria. <laughs> it's got to be near the closest to the end of, of her run. Like, she's like scared and she needs, you know, like, yeah, Victoria's easy. And you could argue, you know, it's actually about the actress who's older than 15. Um, what about this thumbnail, Rabbi, as well? The erotic adventures of schoolgirl Victoria. Um, I think um, you're kind of self-reporting here a little bit, Rabbi. Um, but anyway, you had, you had to edit this thumbnail as well. You had to edit. What images do you have on your laptop, Rabbi? Okay. It's kind of like how one of the biggest advocates for anti-trans legislation and anti-trans talking points in the US right now is Matt Walsh, a man who, and I swear all of this is true, made his start on the internet by recording videos in his car talking about how breedable he thinks 12-year-old girls are. Every accusation is a confession with these people. But, you know, these folks do not care. They do not give a solitary shit about children. They do not care at all. They just want to bludgeon out the LGBTQ plus community in the exact same ways that they tried to in the 60s, 70s and the 80s when, you know, Stonewall, like, it was, it's the exact same talking points. But what the issue is, is that while this rhetoric was relatively underground, like 15, 20 years ago, prominent, but, you know, it would receive some condemnation from mainstream media for the most part and politicians and stuff. It has depressingly become very, very mainstream where, for example, Twitter... Um, is now just allowing the Matt Walsh um, like fake news documentary, What is a Woman? And Elon Musk has just pinned that to his account. It's one reason why Twitter is likely going to be banned in the EU in the next couple of months because they just cannot uh, keep with their hate speech regulations. Elon Musk is just willing to die on this hill just because he's so jealous that his, um, his ex-wife, his ex-girlfriend, left him for a trans woman. It's partly funny, but it's partly quite depressing as well. I just want folks to understand who the real enemy is here like the real enemy is not me is not someone who may have a few questionable takes or someone who occasionally says some dumb things or for the most part a lot of the hate i get is just stuff that these people have imagined that i've said a lot of this hatred is coming from these institutions who are actively trying to take your rights and indeed your very lives away i think you just sort of need that um reminder you already know but I think as we approach the broadcast of the 60th anniversary, where we do have a trans leading character in Yasmin Finney, when we do approach series 14, where we have got uh, Shuti Gatwa, the first black uh, doctor as well, this rhetoric is going to ramp up. And because conservatism, as you know, it's flailing angrily and biting everyone it absolutely can. To quote Russell T. Davis, the Tories are like a, a wounded dog, but a wounded dog bites. I think you need to understand where your allies are, where your friends are, and who your enemies are. And I think no infighting. Please no infighting. Stop fighting people on Doki Who Twitter who may have questionable takes. Have a little bit of charitability and understand where the real enemy is here. Because I'm not saying that the best way to fight this stuff is to do what I do and make response videos or live streams. I'm not saying that my way is the best way. But I do think that it's, it's a little bit telling that when I look at the community generally, I seem to be the only one who actually talks about this shit. People who claim to be in safe spaces for the LGBTQ plus community, who claim to be allies of people of colour and things like that, and then find themselves fighting with allies over tedious shit. And I understand the fighting over tedious shit bit. The fact that they never actually direct that anger and that ire and that outrage to those institutions that actually do mean them harm. There's a difference between someone saying stupid shit carelessly and someone who is actively maliciously trying to kill you. 
And I think you maybe need to recalibrate that. Straight or, or, or gay or cis or trans, whatever. I'm not speaking about one particular community. I'm speaking generally. I'm speaking broadly. Like when it was announced that Rustidia would be taken over and we were getting the very first bits of details about the new era. And people were treating representation as like a competition where they were saying that the 60th anniversary is a step backwards in representation. Whereas, you know, firstly, you've got Yasmin Finney, but also you have got Ruth Madeley as not Hebe Harrison, but a character in a wheelchair in the upcoming specials of Doctor Who, Neil Patrick Harris, who is a gay actor, for example. Like, representation is not a competition. It is a collective act that is a collective good. But even if it was a competition... Like, I don't think it should always be treated as such and that you should be, like, ticking boxes for points. Like, hmm, the Chibnall era got a 8 out of 10 for representation and Rusty Davis 2 has a 5 out. It doesn't work like that. Like, I was talking to a friend at work the other day and she's from China. And she was saying how on the BBC, like, there's been a big push in recent years to put more uh, Indians and West Asians and South Asians in their programming. And that's really, really cool. Like, Front and Centre making sitcoms like Citizen Khan, for example. However, there really aren't any shows that predominantly feature East Asians like Front and Centre. Like, you know, my friend's, like, from China, but she's a British citizen. She pays the licence fee as much as I do. And she's not getting proportional exposure. She's not getting proportional representation on screen. And the BBC has taken so much flack from bigots for being, quote, too diverse and too woke or whatever. But in reality, the BBC could be doing significantly more. Doctor Who could be doing significantly more, but the BBC as an institution generally. Many of these media outlets can also be doing significantly more. There's, what, like, half a million to, like, approaching a million people in the UK from China, or with Chinese heritage, but you don't remotely see that sort of representation in the BBC, a British broadcaster. It's what I've said before on this channel, just the idea that one trans actor is considered shoving it down your throat too much representation. You know, and one disabled actor in Doctor Who Flux was too much representation, was too much pandering and woke stuff for people like Nerd Rotic and Heels vs. Babyface, the latter of whom has already come out and called Russell T. Davis a, quote, groomer because he's cast Yasmin Finney. Like, you know, these people, firstly, they have no morals, they have no principles, they also don't give a flying shit about children because they've, like, hosted live streams and stuff with Alex Jones, who was found to be recently in possession of child pornography. They do not give a flying shit about children or their safety or generally, you know, we, we, we know all this, okay? At least I hope we know all of this. And I just think that in 2018, as a fandom, we weren't ready, collectively. We did not hold the line we were not prepared for the amount of absolutely unhinged and insane shit that was going to be thrown the way of, like, Doctor Who. And media in general, but of course this is a Doctor Who channel, I'm going to talk about these things through the lens of Doctor Who. I also, right now, don't think the fandom is ready. I think that they're generally broadly aware of all of the hate against people of colour, uh, the rampant anti-Semitism, anti-LGBTQ plus uh, rhetoric going around right now in the UK and in America. But I still don't quite think that they're ready for how Doctor Who is going to be perceived, talked about, and by extension, its fans and the people who make it. I don't think that they're quite understanding of the situation and i'm not saying that they have to understand this is not me trying to impose limitations or impose morals on people but when i like i said when i do see doctor who fans in fighting over the stupidest shit but never never posting that clip from talk tv or gb news or those articles in like the daily mail you know I think that the priorities aren't in the right place. And I think part of that is like, you know, because I'm just a relatively small creator. I'm, you know, a bit of a bigger name in the Doctor Who fan bubble. But relatively speaking, I'm a bit of a smaller creator. So, you know, they can throw shit at me and I'll actually read it. I might actually even engage with it, God forbid. But, you know, these big institutions, these big names, they, they are much more difficult targets, which is why I think they don't even bother to go for them. But because I did a video on that talk TV segment, Ofcom actually investigated, you know, and then for several months afterwards, they did not talk about Doctor Who again, at least until quite recently. You know, there are ways to be a good advocate 
be a good ally, be a um, be a good representative of the show, without just shitting on your own. If that makes sense. Thank you. For, I it's, I don't I don't even want to like prop my prop myself up on a pedestal here. But it's like if you if you treat your allies like this, fair enough. But why don't you treat your enemies like this? Why don't you treat them with even remotely the same amount of scorn? I, I, I personally don't get it. I, make it make sense to me. I didn't know that about Alex Jones, but how do I think you're going to us? Yeah, it was found during his recent defamation trial. His lawyers accidentally sent the, the prosecution like terabytes of child pornography by accident, allegedly, uh, which Alex Jones possessed. But, you know, he'll spend years on, on um, InfoWars talking about that. We must protect the children from the, from the gays, from the, from the stuff that makes the frogs gay, for example. You know, maybe they aren't allies. I've kind of thought that as well. Partly, I think a lot of it is tall poppy syndrome. But also, like, uh, I remember back in January with the whole Disney discourse, I said, like, I think that my community is you know the mr tyler's community is a pretty safe space for lgbtq plus doctor who fans and a few people were like laughed at me for that but then i thought back to some of the shit i've seen on like stan twitter and like i, I know like of a um there was like a, a trans teenage uh, trans teenager who was like part of the community for a while and was like pretty well like regarded i forget their name off the top of my head but then, like, they said that they weren't a big fan of how Thasmin was done in Legend of the Sea Devils and Eve of the Daleks. And then, like, because of that, she was considered an easy target. And then she was doxxed, like, she, uh, like, she was outed to her parents because they found their Facebook page. And then, like, because she wasn't out to her parents. And then they outed her to her parents because they disagreed on Thasmin. So, like, what the fuck? Like, this is not a safe, like, I've never done that. There was also, what was it? That, um,. This was a while ago. A lot of what happens on, like, Stan Twitter as well, a lot of it is driven by misandry. And I get it. Dudes are generally a bit shit. I get it. It's coming from one. But also, like, because of that, a lot of it expends into general, like, biphobia as well. Like, there was someone else on Stan Twitter as well who uh, was by dating, like, a, a woman dating a woman and then started dating a man and the moment that happened the misandry kicked in and they were like ostracized from the community like it's, it's kind of wild which is why i think i'm able to, like none of that's happened in my community as far as i'm aware if that has happened let me know and i'll fucking ban them a lot of people like latched onto the idea of mr tyler's gets queer emails but i, I do i get private a lot of private correspondence what gets forgotten in that in the whole debacle is that that emails thing was said in a general lengthier tweet about how i get private correspondence on discord as well and emails and dms on twitter and stuff it wasn't just emails but i am a public figure of course i get private correspondence like what and a lot of that private correspondence informs my opinion you know I think the fact that people latch onto that but never explain what the issue or the joke is, I think is a bit telling. Whether or not the Mr. Tyler's community is a safe space for LGBTQ plus people, that's for you folks to say. But I can safely say that none of what I've seen happen in just the fringes of Stan Twitter has happened in my community, as far as I can tell. Over the past, like, few months, I've had, like, you know, death threats and stuff from, like, Nazis maybe three or four times in, like, DMs and emails and stuff. But from Stan Twitter, I get them quite frequently. Uh, and not like from old accounts, but from like main accounts. I can go on their profile and see that they've got like seven or eight hundred followers, and they've they've very frequently got like companions in their bio, uh, in their profile pictures and stuff. Doctor Who companions. So it's just, you know, it, I consider that to be a little bit of a of a, re of a bit of a red flag. Um, but yeah, like I said, a, but a lot of my perspective comes from the fact that I work in the industry that I work in. Like, I like a lot of people sort of like oh you're doing the bare minimum by accepting people's existence and you know i i, I kind of get that but it's also the fact that not everyone is fortunate enough to be born in a liberal or left-leaning family or grow up in an environment where people from different groups are accepted like what what if you grow up in a deeply conservative household and then because of that you end up hating uh, people of color or lgbtq plus people like it's not your fault you didn't ask to be born in that environment and because you maybe had that past that was informed by the people around you and the community and stuff like that and then you change later on i i still think that you're 
able to become an ally or an advocate just because you had that like I feel like I'm rambling at this point now, but I hope you get what I mean. I am lucky to be working in the industry that I do because I work freelance in media and media, like the crew aspect of it at least, is pretty liberal by necessity because conservatives who do not believe in the idea of collective action and collective work, whereas the media industry needs collective action and groups of people and crews to make the media that they do, like just by necessity. And because of, like, the industry that I'm in, you get a lot of, like, predominantly creative and diverse people, from, like, trans people to people of colour. Like I mentioned, I was talking to somebody from China a few days ago as well to get that perspective. So I'm very lucky that I'm able to have a perspective that is informed by those people from those diverse backgrounds. I, I admit that I'm lucky in that. And because I'm freelance, I hop from job to job to job. So I get a lot of, like, a lot of people. I know a lot of people from a lot of different backgrounds. I'm fortunate in that, and I understand that that is a social privilege. I get that completely. And I think what seems to happen a lot in uh, fan circles or geek circles is that they do end up in their own little bubbles, I think, as well, where they think everybody kind of agrees with them. And algorithms as well push them in this direction. Like I said, these are systems that are coercive socially. I, I, yeah, I get that. But it's more a case of, like, recognizing what the problem is which leads to the broader point of know who the enemy is here. You know, like, I may have some dumb fuck opinions in your, in your opinion. I may say some stupid shit, but, you know, I'm not going to vote for people who are going to hurt you. And you may consider that to be bare minimum. But, you know, I, I get that. But if you hate me, I sure hope you sure as shit hate the people who actually, who actually hate you. Maybe you do. I just never see it vocalized. I don't see it posted or talked about. You know, food for thought there. Have you seen the whole Miles Morales and Spider-Man thing for the right? Yeah, I've, I've seen that. And from what I can tell as well, the um, Into the Spider-Verse, um, well, no, Across the across the Spider-Verse, that's the name of the latest one, right? Um, that That's actually about that, which is very, very fun. The directors have confirmed that it is about like people like Nerdrotic who like do not accept Miles Morales as Spider-Man. Vortex Alliance, can we just go back to enjoy and watch my favorite show? Here's the thing, though. We never picked this fight as fans. We never picked this fight. Conservatives did. I would genuinely love nothing more than to just watch the stupid and fun blue box show. But because of conservative power structures, we're just watching the fun blue box show, but they're like, that was a trans person in it. This show's coming for our kids. Or, there was a black person in it. There's clearly some social engineering going on here. And then they use their platforms and their positions of influence to make that the conversation. Like, fans and progressives, for the most part, we just want to watch the show. We just want to enjoy it. We didn't start this fight. We didn't pick it. Conservatives did. And they're angry that they lose all the time. Like, I, I genuinely can't think of a single social issue over the history of modern civilization that they've ever been on the right side of so you know they take a lot of l's but because of social media they're taking a lot more l's publicly so i think they're thrashing and they're angry a lot more than uh a, a lot more than they used to like for example we, here's the thing like you can obviously i have political opinions i have political thoughts and things like that but Watch my review of Planet of Giants, of the William Hartnell story. We talk about the production values, the history of the episode, the performances, the fun villains. There's a little Simpsons skit in there that I'm really proud of and happy with and everything. And we do spend a few minutes talking about the inspiration of the story. Silent Springs, the book and the pesticides that were being deregulated in the, in the, in the 50s and the 60s. We, you know, that, that's part of the conversation. You get all of that in the review. You go to a nerdrotic review or a Bolstrek review, or you see an episode of Doctor Who covered by GB News Talk TV, it's all identity politics. There's no or very little actual analysis to be found. It's all about the politics with them. So when they say you're making the media political, you're forcing politics into it, no, it's them. Th the art itself is already political. It's already, like, embedded into the work by nature of it being art made in a society. But the obsession with it and the fact that, yeah, talk about it if you want to, but the fact that they do a review and that's all they talk about is so telling to me.
and the fact that they use it as a Trojan horse, like, you know, Jeremy Clarkson writing that article in The Sun years ago, saying, oh, Doctor Who's apparently doing bad in the ratings, I don't know, I've not watched it, by the way, here's a whole screed about how women should not work at the BBC, or here's a whole screed about the, the anti-Holocaust denial film uh, denial, uh, let, I'm going to write a few paragraphs just actively misrepresenting the film, so I'm not, not, not Holocaust denial, like, like, so you put Doctor Who in the headline. You made this a story in the sun about Doctor Who, but it's not about Doctor Who. You've just used that to espouse some pretty reprehensible beliefs and thoughts. Like you've made this political. Like it's so obvious. There was even that uh, Conservative Party leaflet in Wellingborough back in 2019 where they cited Doctor Who by name as like the downfall of Western civilization and like a woke show that needs to be taken down. Like. You know, we just want to watch the fun sci-fi show, folks, but since you are so determined to pick this fight, I, I guess we kind of have to have it. But if you're going to have that fight, don't you at least want to support the allies, support the advocates, or at the very least, don't infight all the time? Like, a lot of... I, I very, very rarely start shit on Twitter. Like... I'll, like, of course, punch down to conservatives and reactionaries and stuff. But in terms of, like, fan opinion, I'll sometimes, like, weigh in. But, like, yeah, this is an interesting discussion. This is my thought. I, I very rarely antagonize on Twitter. Very, very rarely. Unless, like, I'm called out first. It's, I very rarely start shit. Very rarely. Yes, Alex Rooney Composer's right. Women in TV causing men to do crime. See Doctor Who. Yeah, you had an actual conservative MP saying like, on International Men's Day that the casting of Jodie Whittaker in Doctor Who and like Rey in Star Wars and female Ghostbusters not only causes crime in the UK amongst men, but specifically stabbings. Like... I hardly saw anyone on Doctor Who Twitter talk about that. I saw, like, general mainstream punditry, like, laugh at it and poke fun at it, yeah, but I think it was only me and a couple of other people talking about it. And like I said, you don't have to talk about it. But then when you see those same people, like, go after their own, like, go after other fans for pro in the name of progressivism, makes it weird. I think it's a little weird. Yeah, Tory MP Nick Fletcher, who I believe only won his his election in his constituency by a pretty narrow margin. He's probably not going to be lasting his next uh through the next election, fingers crossed. Is it awesome that you've got Yasmin Finney, a trans actress on the cover of Doctor Who magazine? 100%. Is it great that Yasmin Finney has got some, uh, has got a massive audience on Instagram and social media, has had a great breakout role in, Heart, in Heartstopper on Netflix, is on many other magazine covers, awesome stuff, and I think that says a lot about how society generally, broadly, has become more accepting over the past 20 or so years. We are living in rainbow capitalism, which I acknowledge has its own issues, but it's certainly better than what it was before. All I'm saying is that, yes, celebrate this. It's worthy of celebration. It's worthy of talking about. It's worth signal boosting and platforming LGBTQ plus and non-white creatives, etc. But just know that don't rest on these laurels, okay? Just don't rest on these laurels and just be braced for impact for the next few months and know who the enemies are. Know who is willing and ready to fight against you and is wanting actively campaigning to remove your rights and your very humanity and go after them i th i just think we need to sh stop the infighting generally it's a bit disheartening to open up the bird app and see general infighting when we really could use the unified front not just for ourselves but also just oh i remember something else i wanted to mention i saw this as well an interview with the rings of power star ismail cruz cordova uh, who was part of uh, who played a who played a black elf in amazon prime's rings of power uh, he did an interview with variety saying that it wasn't just attacks on social media my phone got hacked i had bank account attempts of being hacked my paypal got hacked my friends got messages i got death threats i got things mailed to me people found out my address it was a lot of that all because he was a black man in a lord of the rings adaptation we also know that shuti gatwa 
for himself and his family has had to hire 24 7 security because of conservative backlash to him being doctor who i think we need to understand who the real enemies are and i think we need to understand that it's not just fandom and the community that is impacted by these things it's the people who make the media in general I'm sure that Yasmin Finney being in Doctor Who has been on the receiving end of a hell of a lot of harassment, intimidation. We also know Charlie Craggs, who um, played Cleo in Doctor Who Redacted, is a trans actress. Uh, she got spat on in the street, uh, went to court for it, uh, and she was the one who was actually penalised for it because she filmed the person who spat on her. Uh, even though that was an obvious hate crime. And according to uh, Charlie Craig's Instagram stories, she is not going to be playing Cleo in Doctor Who, the TV show, because of her political opinions, aka her advocacy for trans rights. So we have a lot of ways to go, of course, obviously, and it would really, 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 really help if fans didn't try to hold the cause back and actually started allying with each other and fighting the real enemy here. Nicole Maines is a trans actress who got a ton of hate when she guest started the episode of The Flash. Yeah, and uh, Kelly Marie Tran in Star Wars as well for being a non-white person in Star Wars was hounded off of social media. Like, this thing has depressingly become normalized. I don't think we'll ever stop infighting as part of a community fandom I've ever seen. I don't think people acknowledge the only safe spaces are the ones we make and maintain. I, I understand, like, infighting when it comes to the show itself. And I like this episode. I like this. Stuff. But when it comes to the sake of progressivism and progressive values, even though we're ostensibly on the same side, and like, I, 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 just because you're an ally doesn't mean you're perfect, obviously. I think there's some educating that many people can do and can be exposed to and all that good stuff, of course. But I, I, I just think that people need to know when's best to, A, like, restrain themselves, like... Do I invest a lot of energy dunking on this person for things that... Maybe I could give this tweet a little bit more of a charitable reading. Or could I better invest that energy and negativity into actually fighting against the people who we, who want to do us harm. This also applies to the creatives of Doctor Who as well. Not just the TV show. I really, really want people like Russell T. Davis and the writers and the, crea and the creatives, like David Tennant and Georgie Tennant as well, who are very vocal, like pro-trans and pro-LGBTQ plus general like advocates. Like their social media is like full of like progressivism and support and that's awesome. But also companies like Big Finish as well, who maybe they're not going to anymore, but like writers like Trevor Baxendale have like endorsed a hell of a lot of like transphobic and anti LGBTQ plus stuff on their Twitter before. Like their likes are like a cesspool of like anti trans stuff as well, but they are currently, um, like tomorrow, there's going to be a Trevor Baxendale penned Warmaster story. There's, there's a uh, Trevor Baxendale's also got a 10th Doctor story that's going to be coming out in a few months' time. And even on the last live stream, there were like two trans actors in the two box sets, in Torchwood Among Us and in the Ninth Doctor Adventures Pioneers. There were trans creatives and trans writers. There's a trans companion of the Eighth Doctor. You know, there's Theo, who writes for, who's, who's a non-binary writer, who writes for the Gallifrey War Room set as well. Like, how, how, how I'm, I don't want to speak on their behalf or anything, but... I, how do they feel? I'm genuinely asking. Like, how do they feel about Big Finish continually employing a writer who not only considers them to be subhuman, but also to be like, a danger to people? Because that's the type of stuff that Trevor Baxendale like supports and retweets and likes on his Twitter and stuff. So, like, maybe people like maybe magazines like Doctor Who magazine a couple of issues ago should not platform or talk to Trevor Baxendale and then do a Pride Month issue in June. You know, maybe Big fin maybe Big Finish have have severed ties with Trevor Baxendale. I don't know. They've not released a public statement, but it would be nice if they released a statement to clarify the situation, because the fact that they haven't released a statement on Trevor Baxendale indicates that maybe he'll come back and how do the big finnish actors and writers and the other talent feel that there's someone in their ranks who actively despises them for identity reasons i i, I don't like i said if they want to speak up they're more than they're more than happy to i'm just genuinely curious i want to know what they think about it and like Gareth Roberts as well, like, I understand that it's harder to sever ties with Gareth Roberts because he's so tied to Doctor Who and the Sarah Jane Adventures and stuff like that, but some of the, 
some of the like transphobic stuff he's come out with is absolutely abhorrent. It's not a very safe working environment to have people like Trevor Baxendale or Gareth Roberts be working at the companies that they're working at. Like you wouldn't hire a member of the KKK at a company where you employ a few black people is all I'm saying. Hasn't he been dropped? There's been no, as far as I'm aware, official announcement or official statement regarding it. If he's been dropped, it's been done quietly. So, we, you know, it would be nice if Big Finish, you know, stood up publicly for their diverse creatives. Like, I'm not, like, they should do it anyway, but the fact that in the last live stream, there were like two trans actors in the two box sets that I reviewed, and there's like trans writers and stuff and, and trans companions of that a part of like the big Finnish universe, it will be nice to know that the company publicly has their back. Do you think if those types Roberts, Baxendale educated themselves and actually changed, they'd be rehabilitated back into the fandom? Yeah, I, I, I'm one of the very few leftists who believes in the idea of rehabilitation. You know, like 10, 15 years ago, I was transphobic because I grew, even though, you know, I grew up with a, like, a pretty diverse group of people, I'd never met or spoken to or seen a trans person until, like, I was out of university, I think. My only representation on screen for trans people was South Park and Little Britain. Like, that was kind of the extent of, like, gender non-conformity representation that I watched. It was a different time, and of course, maybe if I'd been shown the right things at an earlier age, maybe it would turn out differently. Like, I'm all for the idea of, um, of rehabilitation, like, in, in practice. People are a product of the environments that they grow up in. And because we are on Turf Island, there's going to be a lot of that stuff that's that, that's conditioned into people. Little Britain should have made <laughs> Little Britain should have made you empathetic to Welsh gay people. Should have done, but uh, the, the war between the the English and the Welsh, you know, those those trenches run deep. I also I'm very 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 much expecting segments or maybe even the entirety of of that segment to be lambasted by corners of the community and stuff and yeah, i'm open to the criticism i always am um but i also think that if you invest a huge amount of energy and anger towards me and what i've said and the, the community that i've built and things like that you know I'm, I'm open to the criticism but i also am curious as to whether or not that person would hold the same ire to talk tv or gb news and if they do so as publicly both of my parents have gone to anti-vax Facebook it's shame people. Yeah, I've got some like family in like Canada and in Florida. And I've just seeing what they've been posting and sharing on Instagram, like um stupid Joe Rogan stuff and um uh uh Jordan Peterson stuff. It's like, oh no, this person hates you and probably wants you dead. Don't share that. I saw somebody, and I shit you not, one of my friends who was like uh like non-binary trans mask, um shared a pos shared an article positively saying that in florida they're going to do the death penalty for um people who've committed sexual offenses against children um and they were like yeah about time yeah they, this is a good thing and i was like oh no you no you 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 uh you sweet non-binary child no uh that's that's targeted at you like, you've not read between the lines and you don't understand the context that they're trying to make LGBTQ plus people in general in Florida be uh, convicted of child sex crimes. That's, they want the death penalty for you. You've not, oh. and it was like, I, I actually asked a few friends. I was like, do I bite my tongue or do I tell them? Like, I, I don't know. Like, those are awkward situations and I don't have the answers to those ones, but oh. Bad news for Matt Gates. True. Bad news for, for quite a few people who we've talked about on this live stream so far. You should include this part about knowing that folks will clip out of context in your segment. Um, no, they'll get, then they'll just clip that bit out. <laughs> anyway, right, rant over. I'm going to get a lot of emails from the gays for that segment. <laughs>